Hello everyone, I'm Paul and welcome to Jellin Outdoors. Today I've got some Nylite LED lights to mount on to my Kubota. Basically what I've got is a light bar and I've got two work lights for the rear and a wire harness that came with the set. So let's get this installed. So let's go over here to the tractor. What I'm going to do is I'm just going to unravel the uh, the whole wire cable harness here and down below here there's a plate you can see here I'm going to mount my relay on there this is the relay here I'm just going to mount it there loose for now and the reason why I'm mounting it there is because it's the piece that I need to be able to stretch from the beginning so what I'm going to do is it's going to put the bolt through the top here down underneath there's a hole here a couple holes here it's going to use one of the pre-drilled holes for most of this install there's not going to be too much drilling there's one spot that I have to drill other than that I'm using all pre-drilled holes that uh, are on the tractor itself so I just put in the washer lock washer and they uh, are not here to hold the relay in place and at the end I'll come back and I'll fasten all the wires up but for now we'll just uh, get things into place uh, it's a lot easier to run the wiring and then tighten everything up after that so I've got this just about tightened up okay so that's just on there snug so I want to show you here on the right side of the tractor there these two lines here that you see are for an auxiliary or light work lights or anything that you want to connect it's 120 uh, watt uh, connection here. Uh, I think it's 15 amps. Basically this was all taped in here. Now the connectors that you see on here, I changed this connector. There used to be bullet connectors on here, but I don't have any bullet connectors to connect on this side. So instead of buying new ones for about seven dollars for two or three bullet connectors, I ended up using some of the stuff that I have here. So this is where my power source is going to be. I'm not going to connect directly to my battery. This is fused. This runs to the front of the uh, tractor and there's a fuse box and it's a 15 amp fuse there. So the wiring harness, what I'm gonna start off with is I'm gonna start off with the wire that runs up to the, to the top, to the LED bar, light bar that I'm gonna put up there. So I'm gonna take that wire and I'm gonna run it. What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna run it up underneath the fender here. You can see I got a little hole here to go through. And I'm going to pull all that wiring through so I don't get it caught down below. And that's why I wanted, this is my starting point, that's why I put the relay on you. As you can see, it's the pivot point for all the wiring that's going to be done here. So as I come through there, and what I can come up is alongside the rocks, there's a little hole here on the inside, on the fender well. And I'm going to put it on the inside, and I'm going to pull all the wire up. Just like that. So now I've got my wire here. Next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to drop my rocks. What I want to do is I want to go through this hole here and come out on this hole to alleviate all the wiring exposed on the outside. So I'm just going to drop the rocks. Okay, I got the rocks down. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to feed the, the uh, wiring through here. I'm going to put it through, uh, I guess I can do it on the outside or the inside. And I think in my case, I'm going to put it on the inside. I'm just going to go around on the other side of the tractor. And I'm going to feed it on the inside. That way I don't see as much of it. So what I'm going to do is that there's the two holes here. I'm going to insert the head. I'm just going to insert one there. And then I'm going to insert the second one. And then I can push it up and try and feed it up. And if you kind of look up in here, in the rops, what I've got is a piece of lead wire. And I can just use a piece of lead wire in, in here. And I'm just going to hook my wire 
just to grab what I have there. I can feed it a little bit more. So I'll be able to pull the wire up through. So I'm going to pull all the wire that I can get up here. I'm going to pull all up now. So basically from this point here all the way to here so far the wire is all going to be hidden. There'll be a little bit of exposed wire from here down to this point on this side here. So I'll just keep feeding that wire in. Okay guys on this side of the tractor to get the, uh, the wire through the top part of the rocks I'm going to pass this yellow lead wire up through from the bottom. And I'm going to push it all the way to through the top. And now that I've got it through the top here, I'm going to attach it to the wire that I want to pull through down there at the bottom. So I'm just going to tie one of these up. I'm going to try and wind it nice and tight so that it'll pull through without falling off, I hope. Now we pull it back down and feed the wire from the top at the same time. Okay, I've got my wire right there. I've got a pair of pliers here, just a thin pair of needle nose, and I'm going to try and pull it through. Oh, it's going to pull a little bit better. Okay, I got the first one coming through. I'm wrecking my boot a little bit, but I'll get the wires through. And the second one will come right through with it. So there we got the wire coming up to the top now. I'm just going to undo the lead wire. We won't need that anymore for maybe at the end there we go to do the uh, part for the switch. So I can just pull all my wiring through and you can see here basically I'm running as much as I can. Now it's going to come up to the top and it's going to run through on the top of the rop, so I'm going to put the rops back up in a minute. And uh, so most of my wiring here from this part here, you can see just a little exposure here, and then um, most of it's tucked in in here anyway, so it's not going to look too bad. Okay, I'm going to go back down to the bottom of the tractor again, and we're going to put the rops up. going to lock it into place so it doesn't fall back on my head. Now I've got my wire just hanging there and that's going to go to the uh, to the light bar. So the next thing I want to do is I'm just going to mount the, um, the two backlights and what I've done is for the backlights is I've cut out this little piece of rubber and it's just corrugated on the one side. This is actually, I'll show you a larger piece. This is just a thin, I guess a sixteenth of an inch uh, rubber matting that you would use for a runner on a, on a floor somewhere for stairs or wherever you want to put it. So I'll show you where I'm going to put the uh, backlights. A lot of people like to put them up here or here somewhere on the rocks. I'm going to mount them here just on the fenders. And the reason why I'm putting them on the fenders is because I think it's more than adequate. I don't need them up on the rocks. They're not going to do anything different. So. I don't think them being higher. And the other thing too is there's some pre-drilled holes already. So I don't need the uh, to do any drilling, which is really nice. Now the reason why I cut these little gaskets out is because I want to protect the paint a little bit here so I can put the corrugated piece here because this is going to be otherwise metal on metal and it'll stop it from scraping. So the next thing I want to do, first thing I want to do actually is I want to run the wire through here one of the holes, run the electrical through, and then I'm going to put the bolt that came with the, uh, the unit here, the nut washer. I'm going to put them underneath. Underneath you don't need any rubber or anything like that because there's a metal plate and it's a stainless plate so we don't need to do anything underneath other than just mount the, uh, the nut bolt in the uh, washer.
Now I'm just putting it on loose for now. I'll snug everything up at the very end after I've tested everything. Now these nine lights are adjustable. They do swivel up or down like this. They don't rotate side to side. Uh, don't think I need that. So anyways, I've got my wire underneath. It's all ready to go. You can see if I just pull it down a little further. You can see here, here's my wire. It's coming through from the top. So we'll do the other side, same thing. We'll get this guy into place. Same thing, I'll put my little piece of rubber washer or rubber gasket, whatever you want to call it, to protect the paint. I'll run the wires through. Now one thing about the wires before I run it through, the they didn't put the connectors on. Um, the connectors came separate, so what I'm going to have to do is I'm going to have to put the connector on after when I wire it up. Uh, and it's actually good in my case because I would never be able to get the head of the connector through the little hole otherwise. So I'll put the other light through here, and a bolt. there's another bolt hole here where I can run my light, and I'll just put the washer, the flat washer, the lock washer, and the nut, one after the other here. Try not to drop everything, but uh, especially out here on the gravel, I don't want to drop anything because it'd be hard to find it. Okay, so that light is there. It's basically sits nice there. It's, it's loose right now, as you know. As I mentioned, I'll tighten everything up after. Everything's wired up and I'm happy with everything. So the next thing I'm gonna do, I'm gonna take the, the two wires um, that are gonna hook up to the lights on each side. I'm gonna wire them up. And as you can see here, there's a harness. The harness and has the connectors you can see here already on them they came that way so I just have to add the connectors they did supply the connectors for these <clears throat> so what I'm going to do is I'm going to crimp on a couple connectors on each side I've got three here so far I should have four but and, oh there's the fourth one and we're gonna, what we'll do first is we're going to connect here. Just going to tighten up the wire here. And I've got four. And they're all, these are the male side. The other side is on the female. So it just doesn't matter which one I connect here. I can do the black one here first. I'll just put the wire through and then I'm going to crimp it. That one's on. Do that for the red. All you have to do is push the wire in, squeeze it down here in the center. I've got that one a little too far. But So that's on there good. They're not moving anywhere. I'm going to do the same thing on the other side. It's a nice thing about this is that um, Kubota does have the power source on the back here. They used to have a 5 or 10 amp. Now it's 15 amp that circuit so which is uh, a lot better so you can put a more powerful light on than what they used to have. So we'll crimp this guy down here as well. And we got the last one here. Sneak that guy on there. And we'll crimp them down as well. Okay, so the next thing to do is to get the wire harness on it. 
Now, what I've done for the wire harness, I'm going to do here is I just need to put some shrink wrap. I call it shrink wrap, it's shrink tubing, whatever you want to call it. I'm going to put that on there and that will allow the connection to stay a little bit more solid. So <clears throat> we're just going to connect the red wire with the red wire, the black with the black. Just got to push them together. Okay, that one's done. And we're going to put another piece of tube, shrink tubing. And we'll do the red wire to the red wire. And we're going to repeat the same thing on the other side. Except we're going to use the extension part of this cable here. And it's the same thing here. We're going to put the piece of tubing here. And I think on this side, it's, give me a second, I've got to get some scissors. It's going to shorten up the length of the tubing here. It's going to cut this in half. This one don't need as long. So I'm just going to fit the tubing over top and this is just going to give us a, a better seal and make it more waterproof and also it will actually make it stronger because it will hold it tighter. So again the black wire to the black. Put the little boot on. There's a little plastic boot that comes with it. So I'm just trying to push it up. Sometimes they go in well, sometimes they don't. And that's the little plastic boot I'm talking about there. And we'll put the red to the red. Yeah, see the boot, the boot there doesn't want to fit the best, but we'll get it in there. Oh, I almost forgot to put my shrink wrap here. Good thing it didn't fit right away. Okay, let's try it again. So let's squeeze this guy's a little bit more stubborn. There we go, nice and tight and up there. And the next thing we're going to do is just going to cover this up with the shrink wrap. And then we're going to get some power here. Rather than using something like a torch or lighter or something like that, uh, heat gun, best. Um, it doesn't uh, catch the, the wire on fire, blacken it or overcook it. So all I'm going to do now is I've got the connections. I'm just double checking to make sure that they're nice and tight. That one wasn't, so it is now. And that one's perfect. So now I'm just going to take the heat gun and I'm going to shrink this down. You'll see here how big it is right now. As I heat it up it will shrink down and it will tighten up on the wire. I didn't have any more of the smaller size so I have to use this bigger piece. It'll take just a little bit longer but it'll shrink down. I use all the smaller tubing on the last job I did. I thought I had some of the smaller tubing left, but I obviously don't, so I'm using the larger stuff. But it's all good. You can see here how it's starting to close up. And like I say, if you try this with a torch or a lighter or something, you know, you're going to burn your wires. It's just not worth it. Get yourself a heat gun. They're cheap. 20, 30 bucks. That's all it is. I guess Harbor Freight in the States and Princess Auto in uh, Canada. You can see how the gooey stuff is kind of filming or forming around, sealing it all up so water doesn't get in there. This one's just about done. It would have been much quicker with a smaller size tube, but that's quite all right. So now I'll do the other one. And then once I'm on this side, same process, 
on the other side. The gun that I have here has two adjustments, so it can have a low heat or a high heat. Right now I do have it on the high heat because the tubing is so much bigger than uh, the actual wire size. So I can get it to melt down a lot quicker. As I mentioned, <coughs> excuse me, as I mentioned, this basically does two things. It keeps your uh, connection more waterproofed and also what it's doing is it's actually keeping it more secure by holding it tighter. It's a lot better than using tape. As you know when you're using tape, it's wind, winding it around and stuff and it's, it doesn't stay as good on there. Or, it just doesn't seal the same way. It doesn't have the, the glue inside or the adhesive inside. Now you don't want to overcook it. To overcook it, uh, it's just as bad as not putting anything at all. So that side's good. You don't want to touch that right away because that, that is pretty darn hot. So on this side here, I've just got the smaller piece of tubing. And then once this is all done, what I'll do is I'll, uh, I'll take a piece of tape and I'll tape up the rest. Actually, this one's a little harder to hold because it's so small. Actually, I could probably do both at the same time here. So that's just about done there. So now we've got the connections on the small lights. The small lights are installed and not, nothing's tightened up. But uh, I will tighten everything as I mentioned once it's done. So I'll turn off my heat gun, let that cool. You gotta watch for the tip of the heat gun, it's uh, extremely hot. So I'm just gonna put that on the ground. Okay guys, the next thing to do is to uh, take the cabling for the switch that goes into the dash. And what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna pass that over the support arm down here for the ROPS and then I'm going to drop it over top of the other side of the axle and I'll pick the cable up in a minute. What I want to do is I want to show you about getting into the dash. So let's go, I'm just going to go on the other side of the tractor here and I'll show you. So what I've done is you can see here basically there's a boot that sits on the steering wheel. I pulled the boot up and I had tilted the steering wheel down. What that allowed me to do is put my hand in this big hole here where the boot was. And as you can see here, you'll see my finger come through. There was a plastic insert that uh, was blank and this is it here. What I did is I drilled a hole because my little rocker switch that I'm gonna mount is round. So I'm I drilled a hole and I used a mortise bit and for you guys out there, I know not everybody knows what a mortise bit is. It's a, it's a drill bit but it looks like this here. This is the one I actually use, it's a three quarter inch. And the reason why I use a mortar spit instead of a standard steel drill bit is because it makes a nice fine edge. And when you only have that much tolerance to make your uh, hole, you wanna make sure you use something like a mortar spit. It works quite well. So the next thing that uh, I'm gonna do is <clears throat> I'm gonna pass this wire down through the hole here. And it's going to come out down in the bottom here in a minute. And the reason why I want to pass this wire through here is because when I get my switch wire, I'm going to pull it up from here and I don't have to uh, take anything else off. You can see right down to the ground through here. And I just about got it through. I'm going to straighten my wire and I'm just going to snug it around here so I don't pull it all the way through. So it's just on the throttle. So I'm gonna to come to that side of the tractor. <clears throat> and if I look down below here, 
I was going to take the camera down here, down below the the, uh, the tractor, and you can see here on the back side, how I've got my cable coming through. So what I want to do is I want to have it running along the uh, hydraulic lines here. I'm just going to kind of just snug it there temporarily, and bear with me here for a minute. I'm just trying to find where I pass. You can see up in here, I got the yellow lead wire. So I'm just going to grab that yellow lead wire. As I mentioned, it comes right down to the ground. And what I'm going to do is I'm just going to wrap my uh, heads here on the uh, connectors around the lead wire. And I'm going to pull... Sorry about the camera work here, guys. And I'm going to pull that straight up. So what I'm going to end up doing is pull that up and I'll be able to get to my dash. And that'll tell me how much cable I have slack. I don't want to fasten it up yet until I've got that all done up. So let's go back top side. You can see over here. I'm just going to go on the other side of the tractor again. <clears throat> Jump up on the top. It's a little easier for you to see. We'll undo the uh, lead wire here. And you can see I can pull it up quite easily. And I've got a little bit of slack there. So the next thing I need to do, just take this off here. And I'm going to... Now you can put some silicone on the back of this here so it doesn't leak, or on this piece here. But um, I'm pretty confident that it's not going to leak, that the plug it has a rubber um, gasket on it, so it shouldn't do anything like that. So the next thing I'm going to do is just going to put the um, switch inside the plastic piece, the cutout. And then I'm going to reconnect my wires. In my case here, the black wire goes to the... Uh, where's the black wire? Goes to the copper looking one. And I'll just put that on there. The white goes into the center. And then the red wire will go to the left side. And the left side is the actual the O for the off. So we can put that there. So now what's going to happen basically is that when I turn the uh, tractor on, it's going to give power to my relay and to my switch so that I can toggle the, uh, the lights on or off. So I don't have to have them on all the time. So I just got to orient this here in a way that uh, I want it so that I have the in and out symbols in the correct orientation here if I can. <coughs> One thing I need to do, and I forgot, I'm just going to get a pair of pliers here. That, as you notice there, they're kind of slipping off quite easily. There's a little thing I need to do. I just need to squeeze the wire um, connector just a touch. The, uh, I'll just take the boot off here. They actually will lock on if you do a little squeeze on them. There's a, you can see here in the center, I don't know if you can see that, but in the center, right there, if you squeeze that, it has a little detent and it will actually lock so it won't come off anymore. Hopefully I got that squeezed on. No. You can tell if it doesn't uh, squeeze on properly, it'll just slip right off. So I'm just going to try and push it in rather than squeeze it. I'm just trying to dent it. I don't want to apply too, too much pressure because I don't want to break my switch. You can see there now it's locked, so it won't slip off. Probably should have done the metal one first, but... And the metal one seems to be locked on anyways. I think I'm going to run a piece of tape. I get the red one here. It's funny how everything <clears throat> just wants to drop when you're trying to hold the things with one hand here. So I'm going to do the same thing here. I'm just going to press on the center band, and the center band will lock everything up here if it wants to get good control of it. It's a little harder when you're trying to do it for the camera. <clears throat> I'm sure some of you guys that do content realize that. Just want to check my connection. 
no, that's not snug enough. I want it nice and snug so that it doesn't slip off because the last thing I want to do is uh, have my switch not working because the wire came off and I got a hot wire bouncing around down there. <clears throat> I'll give it another try here. It's a finicky little thing. I actually had to take the uh, thing off. I had a hard time actually taking it off at first so that I could get the switch um, wires separated so I could put the little switch inside the plastic piece that I cut a hole into. I wonder if I use my bigger pliers would help better. <clears throat> no, that's not good enough. You want to make sure that's good because like I say, you don't want that slipping off. I'll give it one more try here. I don't think the ends of my pliers are very strong. There we go. So now I just got to put the little boot back on. And I'm actually going to tape this one because just as a security blanket, if you want to call it. So I'm just going to put all the little plastics on there to keep everything from touching one another. I'm just going to grab some electrical tape. <coughs> Now shrink wrap wouldn't work very well in a scenario like this because it's just too tight. So I'm just going to use a little bit of tape. And I'm just going to wrap it around. And it will go a little bit onto the switch here. I'm going to tape it just a little further down, and the reason why I tape a little further down is just for moisture. I don't have a lot of wire to play with here, so it's a little tight. be nice if I have my tape a little straighter, there we go. And that should be good. Now we can uh, mount the uh, switch into place on the dash. And I think I want the eye up for my power. And then the O down below for out, in and out. Or on and off, however you want to say it. So there we go. So I got my toggle switch in guys, nice and smooth. <clears throat> the next thing to do is to connect my power source. As I mentioned, I don't want to uh, uh, attach all my cables and stuff or secure them all up until I've got the lights all in an operational mode in case I would have to move something. So anyways, on this one here, as I mentioned, I, uh, on this one here, it came because it was came uh, for a setup going to the battery. So what it had, it had these um, eyelets instead of these connectors. I ended up putting these connectors so that I can connect to the, uh, to the electrical here already on the tractor. And as I mentioned, I had to change these connector connectors in order to fit these connectors on. So I'm just going to go red to red. Just going to find out which one red. This is the black cable. So black cable to the black cable. Just going to push that on. Make sure that's well connected. And the next one is over here. Where did I see it? There we go. And that's my red one. You can see it's kind of a pink. But anyways, it's red. And I'm going to connect that guy. 
So we've got both of them connected. Now the same kind of thing I'm going to do is I'm going to slip over a little bit of shrink tubing on both of them. This one's got a little wrap here. They have a little sticker or label on here. It says uh, 12 volt max 120 watts. Now you're putting LEDs, so I wouldn't really too much about uh, how big my lights are up there. So I'm gonna get the heat gun on these guys. I'm gonna grab my heat gun. And I'm just gonna shrink down the, the tubing. Now for some of the uh, wiring here that's exposed, it has a pretty good sheathing on it, but I'm probably gonna still put a little bit of the uh, wire loom. Wire loom is just this corrugated stuff you see up here. Is that corrugated stuff. I've got a bunch of it. <clears throat> I'll definitely, uh, these exposed parts here, I'm gonna cover it up, give it a little bit more protection after. Now there's no power coming here right now because the ignition on the tractor is off. If I were to turn on the ignition, I would get power. But I haven't hooked the, uh, the LED light bar on yet. I still have that to hook up. Okay, got one of them there, let it cool down. Get the other one. Oh, got a little hot there, got a little too close to it. Again, it's a lot better using a heat gun than it is any kind of open flame. It does a much better job. You still have to be careful. You don't want to overcook it. Okay guys, so that's uh, basically that. Now what I need to do is get these, this wire up here for the ROPS. I need to get it uh, set up onto the LED bar. Alright guys, the next thing to do is to get the LED light bar here uh, mounted on the top. And the way I'm going to do that, I'm just going to remove there's these little brackets here. I gotta remo I've removed the bolts from them. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to mount them up on the top here. I pre-drilled some holes here on this tubing. One hole here and one hole here. And the way I'm going to mount it, I'm just going to use, for now, I'm going to try anyways, I'm just going to use these uh, self-topping uh, bolts, or screws rather, and I'm just going to mount them with that. Now, if these aren't going to hold very well, what I will end up doing is I'll drill through here all the way through my ROPS, and I'll put a full nut and bolt. But uh, I didn't want to have to do that, so I'm going to give this a try first. One thing I'm going to do before I mount that up there is I'm going to put a little bit of Loctite. I'm going to use red. I don't know if it's going to work too good because there's really not a lot of metal for it to... Um, it's not like using a nut and, and a bolt where there's lots to cling on to, but I'm just going to put some on and if it works a little bit, it works a little bit. If it doesn't, well, say la vie. That's uh, the way things go sometimes. So let me just put this here. I'm just going to put this on a... don't want to put this stuff down on the tractor because it's kind of gooey and I don't want a big mess. So all I have to do is just uh, put a little of the red stuff on there, put that through, and just get it on the hole. It's going to get my drill. I got it set here, and I'm going to drill that up in there. Okay, I'm not going to over tighten that. I don't think it needs to be over tightened. Oh, my bit fell off here. And we'll do the same thing on the other side here in a second. Just get some more of this red Loctite. <clears throat> like I say, it may work, may not, but like I say, there's not a lot. It's not like a nut and bolts uh, scenario where you have a, a lot of thread to actually 
thread to thread, if you want to say, <clears throat> that will actually uh, uh, be uh, touching. But anyways, let's see how this works. If it gets too loose, uh, it can always be changed. Not hard to change thing, it only takes a couple minutes. Especially when I have the holes already pre-drilled anyways. So I'll put the other bracket here. Whoa, it's hard on the wrist. <clears throat> okay. I don't want to over tighten it like I mentioned. I want them straight and this one needs to be a little bit tighter though. It's always got to watch with the drill because it's very easy. Uh, usually I, I just use a ratchet and do it by hand because you can feel it much better. Okay, <clears throat> so that's up there. Next thing I got to do is just got to take a minute here, wipe my hands, I'll be right back. Okay guys, what I did is I put the ROPS down, a lot easier for me to put the light bar on. What I've done so far is <clears throat> I just put the bracket in between the mounting bracket here and there's little nuts on here there's actually supposed to be four on each two on this side and two on that side but uh, I'm gonna do three and three and the reason I'm doing three and three is because I lost two of them <laughs> so anyways I've got uh, I'm just gonna mount them on I'm gonna put uh, two on each side and the reason uh, I don't want to put them too tight is because I want to adjust it once, once the rop is up in the air. Now there are little buggers to see in here. And they're hard to get in. I don't know about you guys but when you're using some tiny little bolts and stuff like that and uh, small little spaces and stuff it's not fun to get them in sometimes because uh, you can barely hold on to the darn thing. The reason why I'm shaking it here is trying to get it lined up. It wants to twirl off line on me all the time here. Boy oh boy that's hard to move. I'll try the other side first maybe it will go better. You know sometimes you put things together go really easy sometimes some things are real buggers. There we go, that one started much easier. Just snug it up a little bit so it doesn't fall out. And I can turn it this way, I can take a look anyways. So I got two more to put on. As I mentioned, I'm gonna put two on each side for now. <clears throat> that way I know it's not gonna be falling on me. Hopefully I can get, oh boy, that just wants to fall in there. Getting my hand in there is something else. Actually guys, I'm gonna take, oh boy, I just dropped a, a washer in there and I can't get it out. Boy, there's not much room for my hand. Okay guys, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna flip the rops up it'd be a little easier for me to do it. Uh, I got it started, at least it was too hard to get it started, so now I'm going to flip it up. Got to do what you got to do. There we go. Just going to lock it up here. I lost the washer up on the top, went underneath the, uh, the tubing. Hopefully I'll be able to find it. Now you can see as I got on the tractor that it's close to my head. I'm going to have to watch when I get on and off the tractor that I don't bump my head. I was going to put it on the outside of the top of the, on top of the canopy, but then I just figure it's just way too high up in the air and I'm going to catch a tree or something even more than, and just pull it right off or something. Okay guys, I'm just going to pause the camera here. It'll take me a few minutes to get these little finesse nuts and bolts on here. So uh, you kind of know what I'm doing. What I'm doing is I'm putting a bolt on each side here and then I can adjust the, the light. So we'll be back in a minute. 
Okay guys, I got the light bar bracket all fastened nice and tight. Uh, the problem is the little bolts are so finicky and tight that you can hardly get your hands in there. It takes a long time to do, so I just thought I'd do it off camera. The last thing to do up here is to connect the uh, power source to the light itself. So it's red wire to red wire and black wire to black wire. Just going to plug them in. This one's a little stubborn. Holy smokes, that's tight. It's not going to fall off, that's for sure. And the black one to the black one. Oh boy, they made those connectors tight. That's a good thing, I guess. Not good putting them on, but at least they won't slip off. Okay, so those are on, and once again, I'm just going to add a little shrink tubing. And I'm going to heat it up with the gun. Okay, so guys, what I've done also is um, I've got this extra large piece of shrink tube and I'm just going to put it over top of those two and it will seal the line from here to here, which was uh, quite open. So it'll just take me a minute to do that. The uh, shrink tube is pretty large, so hopefully it will reduce itself small enough. It looks like it's going to. Alright guys, so basically all the wiring's done. The only left last thing to do is two things is uh, one is to tuck all the wires up to feed them all on the long the path that they're gonna follow. Um, I'm gonna do all that off camera. I'm gonna add any wire loom where I think wire loom needs to be put. But before we do that, we'll just check the lights to make sure that they do come on. Usually you check that at the beginning, but I know these are gonna work, so I'm not too worried about that. So now to test my lights, if we just come up to the front, all I have to do is turn the ignition on. The ignition is on, now I just have to turn my switch, and there we go. We've got a nice bright light on the top. And we check the back lights, come to the back. I turn the switch off, let's take a look. The switch is going on, we got lights on both sides. I was very confident that they worked fine. I did not test them, I can tell you that. I did not test them beforehand. I just knew they were gonna come on. Um, so everything's all wired up nice. As I mentioned, what I need to do now is just hide all my wire. I'm gonna go through a process that I'm gonna do off camera. You don't need to see how that's done. Basically all I'm use, doing is using zip ties, little Velcro, and tuck all my wires so that they're more or less hidden as much as I can get them so it looks nice and clean. So I'll show you all that once I come back uh, after that's all done and one thing I'll do later on tonight when it gets dark I'll show you how effective the lights are. I'm sure it's going to make a big difference. Anyways until then guys I'll be right back. Okay guys I have all the wiring all secured up so let's take a look and see how I have it all tucked up. So if you look at the top here on the ROPS on the canopy you can see the wiring coming off the LED light bar and going across on the inside of the ROPS and it comes down as you can see here just on the inside and it comes down here so if we look from the outside all you can see is just a couple of those 
zip ties on the outside. It doesn't look too bad. It looks fairly clean. And then it comes down through here, through the tubing on the inside. It comes down here, goes in past this rubber boot underneath the fender. And you can see here, what I've done is I've put a bunch of wire loom on the wiring. I put it there, I didn't really need to use it. This wiring has a nice casing. It didn't really need uh, anything. I put it there anyway, it's just because of UV rays coming in the back and I have the tractor park outside for a while. The light uh, wiring, or sorry, the wiring here goes across underneath. And what I've done is I've used Velcro to hold it up underneath here and it goes here and around and up to the light. So you can see here the first rear light on the left and then the right rear light and then the cabling that goes up to the uh, instrument panel it goes down here off the relay and if you can see here I'll just put my hand you see where my hand is it goes underneath there we'll go around here on the side and we'll look underneath and you can see underneath hopefully have enough lighting that the uh, wire loom here I protected it um, to keep it away from the moving parts and I fastened it Right here underneath there was a little clip I could tie into. So it comes through here and it, there's the brake here on this side here. The brake here. And the wire loom is just next to it so it won't wear the wire itself. And then it goes here and it goes up underneath here and that goes up into the uh, instrument panel. So that's basically all the wiring. And the one thing here you can see the switch is in. I put the uh, rubber boot back. And you can see my switch here and if i think i turn the light on and if i turn the switch on you can see it illuminates and i turn it off it will go off as well so it's all switched up and ready to go the next thing i need to do guys is to uh, test it at night to see how much brighter it is than the original uh, light lamps that come with the tractor i'm sure it will be much better than it was <clears throat> I did have LEDs on my previous tractor, my BX. One thing to note is I had bought these um, LEDs. You can take a look here at the front of it. I did buy these LEDs seven months before I got the tractor. So they've been sitting here waiting to be installed for quite some time. So anyways, let's wait for dark and uh, we'll see how it looks. All right, guys, it's basically about 9.30. It's uh, dark. It just got dark about 10 minutes ago. So anyways, I'll turn on the lights on the tractor, the standard factory lights. You'll see here, I'll turn them on and it won't be all that bright. That's what we're looking at. I'm just going to jump off the tractor. You can see how much it's lit up in front of me. And obviously the battery is, uh, it's just on battery. Uh, the tractor's not running, so it uh, will not have quite a... It won't be quite as bright and here we got the tail lights in the back here so we can kind of see a little bit here in the dark it's if it was uh, winter time the snow would reflect a lot of the light so it would be much better than that so let's try out the uh, the new LEDs I'll just turn off these lights here and we'll turn on the LEDs and look at that guys isn't that something now the way I've got it aimed up on the top here on my bar is that I have it slightly blocked by the uh, canopy itself but most of my light is down where I want it where I'm working I don't care that it doesn't cast a long long distance that's not what I'm interested in <clears throat> I can still see pretty far as you can see there what I'll do is I'll show you the back here now and I've got quite a bit of light in here behind me this is not too much on the sides as you can see here and my sides are a little bit blocked uh, or blinded by the uh, the darkness but as far as the uh, back of it it's perfect I can see quite a ways and probably see just as far in the back as I can in the front I'll try not to blind you here with the camera but you can kind of see it here in the back and I'll walk to the front and again basically you're going to see it much brighter or a little bit brighter anyways when I start the engine on the tractor and drive and this is just the uh, the lights on the top of the tractor here. Don't want to blind anybody anyways. But it's pretty good considering it's not completely pitch black yet. And um, it's all green in here so the light is being absorbed more than it is uh, reflecting. 
So let's get the tractor started. <coughs> and we can see as I drive along. So I'll put on the uh, other lights as well and we'll turn off the LED lights here. And you can see here now again, I don't have the greatest vision because the light's pretty dim with the uh, standard or the stock lights that come with the uh, tractor. I'll turn on my LEDs. I'll lift my bucket first. You can see I get blinded a little bit more. I don't have the best vision here. I'm going to put the LEDs on and there we go. What a difference. I can turn off the uh, tractor lights themselves, the tractor lights. And you can't even tell that I turned them off. Well, a little bit. You can see a little bit at a distance. There's a little bit of a reflection. You can look far in the distance. All right, guys, basically that's it for today. I've got my LEDs all installed. Um, hopefully somebody's learned a little bit from this that uh, if they want to do it themselves, that's quite easy. It takes a little bit longer when you're filming, obviously. But if you're familiar with wiring and if you've done this kind of stuff before, you're looking at about 45 minutes basically to do an install. Uh, if you're uninterrupted, that is, if you've got all the stuff ready for you. Once again, thanks for watching and we'll see you next time on Gelling Outdoors.